All right, welcome back to Fast Gadgets. Well, I'm on the road once again. Just left one of the classes that I'm teaching, the um, capstone course of a bachelor's program in information systems and security. The students are doing their risk assessment. Uh, actually, they've already gotten through their risk assessment. Now they're working on the risk mitigation. And I did talk about that in my previous videos. So make sure you check it out if you haven't had a chance. So what are we going to talk about today? Uh, this video might be somewhat rambly, but I'll try to keep it on a couple of topics specifically. So there's a couple of topics that I was interested in discussing. I really enjoy reading Slashdot, and I always find stuff very interesting on Slashdot. One of the articles that I read was about a researcher. Well, before I get started on that, hopefully everybody knows about WannaCry or WannaDecrypt or WannaDecryptor, which is ransomware that is based on the NSA kit that was released recently. So the NSA software is that is being used is the payload distributor, which they are referring to as top shelf software. So it's very well written code and the WannaCry or Wanna Decryptor, the actual payload is very poor at best. And basically, uh, WannaCry is hostageware that is infecting and taking over computers and it has had mixed results. There's been newer versions coming out that have fixed some of the previous payload issues. So uh, WannaCry, of course, using that NSA uh, delivery tool is able to deliver it quite well, but what's in the payload really isn't well designed and the coding is poor, so it's not really been taking over as fast as people were thinking. And a researcher, um, and it's really strange, I, this article on Slashdot, one of the problems I have is the researcher, they don't actually have an, a real name or a research institution. It was just um, kind of a, a pseudo name, a tag name, I can't remember what it was, but anyway, this researcher is essentially anonymous. And my whole problem with that is we don't know the methodology this researcher was using, but basically what they came up with was they've discovered, or they think anyway, that the WannaCry uh, infector malware is able to infect a computer that is unprotected on the internet within a mere three minutes. So in one case, they took a honeypot and it was a computer that could be infected and they put it on the public facing internet and I think you know what I mean by that. If you don't, you probably should take a networking 101 class. Uh, basically what that means is the computer has a public IP and it's available on the public leg of the internet. So if you're behind an IoT device like a router that has a firewall or you're behind a firewall on a corporate network, that situation doesn't apply to you because in order for this infection to occur, it has to use SMB ports, and hopefully most of you have left your Windows 10 firewall settings on default, because if you have, your computer really can't get infected on those ports, um, and SMB uh, can't be used to infect your computer because they're blocked anyway, unless somebody comes on your local network that has uh, wanna cry, in which case they do, their system is held by hostageware so they should know better than powering it up on your network because it can use SMB to propagate and it's quite effective. So this researcher basically said that he has infected multiple, well he his honeypot was infected six times in 90 minutes and the reason behind it was according to the researcher is that the scanning method used in the NSA uh, delivery tool was highly effective in discovering systems that were vulnerable and able to be infected. 
So that's a real problem. Now, this leads me on to another article I read just today. And the article was about the debate of whether or not you should update your computer. And we're talking about Windows 10 systems, but I think we could probably include Windows 8 and 8.1. I don't know how many updates are available anymore for Windows 7, but I do know that apparently Microsoft is rushing an update out for WANA Decryptor for and I'm, I'm assuming Windows 7, 8, and 8.1. I do not know about Windows XP. I'm going to go with no, probably not. Anyway, the debate was whether or not you should update your computer and your Windows computer and allow updates to run or if you should disable the service. Now, as many of you know, if you're running Windows 10, you can go in and disable the Windows update service. Now, there's some downsides to doing that. Number one, the chief among them, is that you no longer get updates, and that's a real problem. And if you had disabled updates, the WannaCry hostageware could have infected your computer if, <coughs> if you were on a public-facing computer on the public network with a public IP address space and you had SMB unblocked. So, yes, it is possible you could become infected. And the second thing, of course, is, and I realize this is less important, but still an issue, you, could, you can't do any downloads on the Windows Store. So, the Windows Update Service, at the very least, is a helper tool and is required to download updates from the Windows Store. And I'm wondering, what's your opinion on that? Do, are you doing updates? I know some of my viewers uh, have disabled updates. And I've been doing some reading on the Windows Update methodology. You may recall before that all the updates were singular and you could roll them back and now they're coming as one larger update so they're kind of a roll-up package is what as I understand it and it's interesting because you can't really select different packages that you don't want to update especially if you're on Windows 10 Home or the soon to be released Windows 10 S you actually unfortunately have to take them all now on Windows 10 Home, I do know if you are having a problem with some of the drivers, you can uninstall drivers after the fact, after you've discovered you have a problem. You can do a rollback, which I think is cool. It would be nice to be able to pick and choose like we could, like we could with previous versions of Windows where we would decide which updates. Did we want only important security fixes or did we want all updates? including drivers and other application updates. Now, philosophically, me personally, I do do my updates, but I do have it set so that there's windows when the updates will install. Now, lately on my Yoga 910, I've been running Linux about, oh, I don't know, 95% of the time. All right, well, what a bummer. It looks like, for whatever reason, my recorder's and I don't know why and I don't know when so I guess I'll roll back a little bit and see where I end up uh, let's see we were talking about Windows updates now I definitely do my updates and I like to make sure that I have them done maybe once a month but I have been known to disable Windows update mainly because for me uh, it does get in the way of my work at times so I like to choose the point at which I will actually do those updates it works best for me but let's say for theoretical reasons I didn't do the update soon enough and my computer got infected by WannaCry what would I do well I have heard suggestions that you should just go ahead and pay the ransomware 
so that you're able to get access to your files again. Me personally, and this is just me, so it varies for each individual, uh, I always wonder, do you do backups? Now, I do do backups, so I'm a regular backup person, and here's how I do it. I have all my critical documents located in a folder on my hard drive, and I use Google Docs, well, now they call it Google Drive, to back up all of my documents into the cloud. And to me, this just makes sense. It's the most logical thing to do. Uh, I have had a situation, I did not get infected by WannaCry or other malware, but I was working on a Toshiba laptop that I had, and those, at that point, it still had a spinning platter hard drive. And I did actually, I was working on the system, and the computer started to behave really unusually. I thought, you know, it's freezing up and locking up. I think it's time to do a reboot. It looks like I'm having, you know, maybe a memory error or something like that. So I rebooted, and the hard drive crashed, and it never worked again. So I basically lost all of that data that was on that hard drive. So what did I do to get my information back? Well, I had it all in the cloud. I considered the hard drive a loss, a total loss. I sent the computer in for repair and the computer came back with a new hard drive and I wiped it and reinstalled Windows clean and installed Google Drive and it restored my critical documents. So the end of the story is it wasn't a problem and I always have, always make sure I have at least two computers. So I switched over to my backup computer which also had Google Drive running on it so I had instant access to my documents as well as a local copy on the local hard drive of the other system and I was able to access my data pretty much instantly, right? Or I could download it right from Google Drive if I needed to using a web browser on whichever computer I was using. So, working on my PhD, doing my research, uh, creating documents for the teaching that I'm doing, um, any critical documents I have saved and backed up in the cloud, and then I also do a backup to an external drive, just for paranoia's sake. So if I'm creating any documents or anything, I put them in the same directory and it's real quick and easy just to do a backup and do a differential. So when I move the files from my hard drive to that directory, I just tell it to copy only those files that don't exist. And it only takes a minute or two once that initial copy has been made, the initial full backup. Pretty straightforward, pretty easy to do, and my data is safe. So if I was ever infected by Decryptor, I can tell you right now, all I'm going to do is go ahead and wipe the drive, restore that information from Google Drive, and I'm back in business. Simple as that. What about you? What do you do? For me, that works best, and I don't have to worry about WannaCry or any other malware or hostageware, even if I don't get my updates. But I do do my updates on Windows 10. However, I did the major update. Check my video out on the Creator's Update. Uh, that really went south quickly. That didn't work out quite the way I thought it was going to work out, so that was really unfortunate. Uh, you know, so I have rolled back from the creator's update. And again, if it was a big issue rolling back and I couldn't get it to work, but with the help of some of you, I was able to get my rollback done and get back to my previous version before the creator's update. If I couldn't have done that, I would have just wiped it. <coughs> wiped the system clean and started over. I have my documents, I can get access to those. There's very few applications I need to install, so I really don't worry too much about that. 
just get them installed back again and I'm back in business. Anyway, I want to say thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this short video. Not sure how bumpy it is. I do see the phone moving up and down. So this is kind of a test at the same time of how it comes out. We'll see how it is. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like and subscribe. And I really appreciate when you do share the content. That helps me out a lot. And hopefully you find it useful enough to want to share it. If you really want to help the channel out, and this is certainly not a requirement, uh, I have talked about this, but I don't want you to feel like I'm, I'm requiring anybody to do this. Of course, I can't require it, right? The only thing I could do is stop the channel, and I'm not going to do that because I'm having too much fun. Uh, but if you want to throw a dollar my way for a cup of coffee, uh, consider giving me a dollar a month on Patreon. You can also do five or ten dollars. And hopefully I can get to the point where I'm making a couple hundred dollars a month from Patreon and add to that the couple hundred dollars I'm making from YouTube. And uh, I would end up teaching a few less classes and making more video content. Again, thank you for watching and I'll see you next time on Fast Gadgets.